Shalom, shalom, everybody. This is the Jewish Bible Man. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I wanted to, well, before I address what the topic I want to address today, which is uh, the Trinity, I want to uh, I want to tell everybody that we are uh, opening up a, a teaching center that should be open soon here, maybe in the next two to three weeks. Uh, it should be open, and I just want to invite anybody who wants to come to come. Please email me if you're interested. I'll be glad to have you come. It's going to be a it's going to be wonderful. Um, uh, so just let me know if you're interested in that. If you like what you hear today, give me a thumbs up, post, comment, give me shoot me a question. I'll be glad to address. So the issue that I want to talk to you about today is one that is a very sensitive topic to Jewish people. And that's the issue of the Trinity. Okay, we believe as Christians that. God is Father, Abba, Ben, Son, and Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. We believe that, there's a, that there is one God, only one God, but revealed to us in three persons, and those are the persons we believe. So when I use the term today, uh, plural, uh, I am not referring that there are multiple gods, and I'm not referring to the fact that there are many gods, but only that I'm speaking of what we understand to be the Trinity. So that, that's all I'm referring to when I say that. So I want to make sure I'm clear so I don't have to go back and, and define what I mean by plural. Uh, so hopefully that will help. Remember, we believe one God only. There's only one God. But I think for the Jewish people, that's, that's a very difficult concept to, to understand. At least for the modern Jew, that's very difficult. Uh, certainly, I think... Uh, Many passages in the Old Testament do express a, pl a plural for God. And, and I want to help to try to address that today a little bit. Uh, how do we defend that? How do we defend that when speaking to, to a Jew? And while there are many passages that we can go to, I want to go to two because one really explains it and the other one is a staple for most Jews. Even Jews who don't believe in the scriptures, don't read the scriptures, uh, certainly are familiar with one of these passages. But first, let me start with this. In Genesis chapter 2, I believe it is in verse 24. Let me see if I can get there. It, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, there are two terms used in Hebrew for, for one. One is yachid, and yachid in, indicates only, and echad indicates a, a unit of one. Uh, so it can mean more than one, but it is a unit of one. For example, uh, a cup of water in English clearly uh, says one cup of water, but in Hebrew uh, it's in a plural form, because it means that that one cup of water is made up of a substance that can be broken up into, uh, into multiple forms. In other words, I can take one cup of water and make it two half cup waters. I can, take, uh, I can take water and I can make it ice. I can boil it and steam it. Although it's one substance, it can be used in different ways. So it, it has a oneness to it. A oneness, but never changes its substance. And so... You see that here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says that the man and, and woman would be one, would be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It doesn't mean that the man and the woman are a yachid only. It means that they are a oneness. They are a oneness of unity. Okay? They, they remain two different people, but they are one. They have a unity of one. And so, when you come to a passage in the scripture that is often recited by the Jews, in fact, this has become a, uh, this has become almost like a, a confession of faith to the Jews. Uh, if you go into a Jewish house and you have a mezuzah on the wall, you know, often, although this can create a problem with germs, often they like to, when I was a kid, we used to kiss it like that. And in, inside the mezuzah itself, you would have what's called the Shema you would have Deuteronomy 6, 4, right? And this is what it says. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So now, for the Jew, the issue here is, see, God is one. There is no 
of plurality. There is no Trinity. There is no Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's just one. Well, I think at a closer examination and a more honest examination, we will see that the same term used here is the same term used in Genesis 2.24, where it talks about a husband and wife being one, but it's not referring to their individuality. It's referring that they are a unit of one now. They're married. They share the same life. They share the same everything, right? Whatever trouble comes on that house comes to both of them. Whatever prosperity comes to that house comes to both of them. They, they, are, they exist in a unit of one. And so the term echad is used, not yachid. And, and by the way, that, that is an important distinction between echad and yachid, which later I'll address the issues there too. What is yachid compared to echad? But here in verse 4, the very confession of faith that they make, it's basically saying exactly what we say as believers in Yeshua, the Mashiach. It's saying that God is one, right? And it's saying that there is no other God but God, right? The Lord is our God. The Lord is Echad. There is only one God. But the word Echad does not indicate singularity. It indicates unity of one. So what is he saying? He's saying, Hero Israel, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Right? There is one God. There is only one God. There is no multiple gods, there's only one God, and this Lord is our God, and he is one. He is made up of a unity of one, not, not an individuality, yachid, but, an in, but a unit of one, just like the married couple, same word. So God is simply saying this, yes, there's only one God, but that one God is made up of, of a unity of one. Not that he's a singular of one, there's only one God, but he's made up of a unit of one. So he's indicating to Israel that this is the God that you are to love with all your heart, heart, soul, and mind. You are to love the Father, you are to love the Son, you are to love the Holy Spirit with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your might. Because there is only one God made up of a unity of one. And that's exactly what he's telling Israel. And any honest look at language and Hebrew would make that so crystal clear that it is really just a, it, it's really just a shame that we have to debate that when it, the text is clearly saying that in the scriptures. And for today, we're going to end it here. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And they would usually cover their eyes when they do that. Before they eat, it would be their confession. After they do netilat yadayim, wash their hands. They don't talk until they come back. And then they put their, they cover their face, especially on the Sabbath. And they say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And then they can usher in the meal and begin to discuss the Sabbath or the prayers of the wine and the bread and so forth. But you get the idea that the plurality of God is taught the single and the unity of the oneness is taught, and there's only one God that exists in one unit. Thank you for listening. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you hear. If you got any questions, please ask them. I'll do my best to answer. And remember, there's only one way to be saved. There's only one Goel, one Redeemer, and his name is Yeshua, Jesus.